Hello dear students welcome to pen and paper chemistry on youtube Today we are going to talk about conductivity cell and its use in a Wheatstone bridge in order to determine the resistance of a solution and using that resistance we can also determine the conductivity and the molar conductivity. So please get ready with your pen and pencils because we are going to draw some nice diagrams and I am also going to explain to you the functioning of each one of them. Starting with the diagram of a conductivity cell. Now what is a conductivity cell? It is a device which is used to measure the resistance of a given solution. But using that resistance we can also determine the cell constant and the specific conductivity, molar conductivity of a solution. Now all these things how they are related we have done in the earlier videos. Coming to the parts of a conductivity cell. We have a glass tube here. This glass tube is filled with the solution of the electrolyte whose conductivity is to be measured. We have two electrodes over here. These are platinized platinum electrode. Platinized means coated with a very fine powder of platinum. It increases the surface area. It also reduces the polarization effect. These are in turn connected to platinum wires which I have labeled as connecting wires in the diagram. Why do we need these connecting wires? We will see a little later. Now, first of all, in this conductivity cell, we fill the electrolyte whose conductivity is known at different temperatures. And we measure the resistance. So we know the conductivity, we know the resistance, we can determine the cell constant. And what is cell constant? The distance, the distance between the electrodes divided by the area of cross section of each of the electrodes that we are using. Conductivity cells are of different shapes. This is one of the diagrams. There's another one. This is another simplified view of a conductivity cell and in fact if you see originally when you actually practically use it, it's a very small device which looks like just like a small thermometer. So here again we have the coating of fine platinum, we have the platinum electrodes when we have the connecting wires and all of these are fused inside a glass tube. How and where do we use a conductivity cell? Let's do that. I hope you have a pen and paper in your hand so that you can practice these diagrams and practice their labeling as well. Now this is the setup of a Wheatstone bridge. I'm sure you must have done this in physics as well. How a Wheatstone bridge is used to determine the resistance of an unknown device. Here I have used a conductivity cell. Now if you remember I had mentioned that we've got platinum wires and why do we need those platinum wires? I cannot attach the connecting wires directly into the solution. We need some connection point between the wires over here and the conductivity cell and that is where the wires of the, the platinum wires or the connecting wires of the conductivity cell, they come in useful. We have a variable resistance R1 over here. So please label it as variable resistance. We have two fixed resistances here, R4 and R3. This is the common bridge, what is called as the detector, which is usually a headphone or other electronic device which goes completely silent once this bridge has become balanced. So what do we do? 
first we will put the solution of a known electrolyte an electrolyte whose conductivity is known we will measure the l upon a as indicated earlier or as explained earlier then we replace the known electrolyte by an unknown electrolyte the electrolyte whose conductivity is to be measured and again we will uh, measure at what point does this detector go silent and that will help us to determine the resistance of the electrolyte in the conductivity cell and how do we do that we have simply r1 by r2 is equals to r3 by r4 that is when we say that this bridge is balanced and what do we have to determine in this the only unknown value over here is r2 now a doubt arises if we pass current through this solution through the electrolyte we have also read about electrolysis electrolysis may take place and this may bring about a chemical change in the electrolyte so our very purpose is lost to counter that problem we are using an oscillator over here which is nothing but a source of ac power in the audible range of 550 to 5000 hertz so that removes the defect or the drawback of the solution getting electrolyzed so here i have listed the two points to important points to be considered when talking about the conductivity cell first why are we using an ac current because a dc current will bring about electrolysis or a change in the chemical composition of the electrolyte why are we using platinized platinum electrodes platinized to reduce the polarization effect and we need the platinum electrodes so that they serve as a connecting link between the solution and the wires of the wheatstone bridge i hope you have noted them down if you see in actual life your um, conductivity meter looks something like this now this diagram this picture i have picked from wikipedia so this is a device which is put into the solution and it displays the conductivity value on the meter so the measurement in actual scenario in real life is pretty pretty simple because this has been simplified using the same concepts where do we use we use it at a number of places first and foremost where you would have observed is where they check the pollutants in water whether the water that is there is polluted or not we also of course use it to determine the conductance of solutions of unknown solutions so once we know the conductance we are also able to identify the type of solution it is so at null point r1 by r2 is equals to r3 by r4 i hope this clears the concept and this also completes the topic of electrochemistry now the only thing left on your part is probably find out two more ways where the conductivity meter or conductivity measurement is used happy studying to all of you stay subscribed because we are very soon going to start a new topic